it's kind of early spring and as you can see absolutely brilliant I swear I kind of look around and now you know what they mean by the birds and the bees and the springtime and all that kind of stuff you can see here on the floor everything's really green you've got wild flowers there's wild wheat lots of clover and I'm talking fields and fields of it we've had great rain now it's it's probably 11 a.m. Um, and people think you're crazy the deer are all hiding this is this that's the point we actually want to go in to where they're sleeping catch them off guard we're just gonna to have to take our time so today's episode is going to be going into the thick stuff and doing something that's probably not recommended and hopefully we can come out with some film footage but I'll tell you what I said to my brother back at camp if we actually do get something today we're actually having a real massive barbecue at night and we're dying for, dying for some venison so let's see how the day turns out How unfortunate is this? We just seen one about an hour ago, so that's a dead shingleback lizard. First time I ever seen one dead to be honest. I don't know what's killed it, but the insides have been eaten out. That's a shame. They're a beautiful lizard. But it's good there's plenty around actually. I've seen I think four this trip, so this is pretty good. It's pretty hard to see. Well, yeah, that's nature, I guess. Well, it's that time of the day where we find probably the most scenic place on the property. You sit down, you're listening to the water flow on this beautiful river. And you got these little creek beds that flow off the main river. And yeah, just amazing place to, especially in springtime when you got the flowers and hear frogs in the background. The bird life's amazing and yeah so we're just sitting down to have a sort of like a midday break and then we sort of head our way back to camp and on our way we just tread lightly and usually deer pop up we've seen already i think about 10 deer but couldn't get any on film due to the wind it's swirling in every direction so um we're just gonna wait it out
first encounter, I had seven does come across the thick stuff here and soon as she reached the area where I had walked in from, she smelt my scent and jumped in the air. All of them had ran back down that gully. Sam's gone further up so he didn't get to see him. I stopped to eat some Alan's lollies. <laughs> because I stopped to eat, they just popped out of nowhere. That was a nice little herd. They were all those, but... And they sort of ran that way because they caught my scent. Not me, but where I was stepping. Which is pretty amazing. Only from the smell of my feet, they know. That's how sensitive these animals are. Well, this is the first time I go out with my son Mahmoud since probably, I don't know, I'd say about four or five years ago. It was the last time we went out together. Um, yeah, I was pretty shocked when he said he wanted to come. <laughs> Being a, a second year apprentice electrician at the moment. <laughs> I'm out for a hunt now. And hopefully my dad can get something. So after two days trying to land a red velvet stag, Things didn't work out there. I've seen a lot of hinds and fawns and spikers, but we finally come back to fallow deer country. And today we realized we got some amazing bucks on camera. The trail cam proved real well for us. And we haven't seen bucks of that status for a long time. The rabbits. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm, I'm trying my luck for my first big velvet fellow buck and it will be special today to do with my son Mahmoud um, he hasn't been out in a while but there's rabbits everywhere at the moment So we finally sat down in a spot where we're about 70 meters away from a water hole and we used to have a good trail camp here and we used to pick up a lot of deer on this trail camp but since then I've moved it um, it's around 30 degrees today which is you know, it's warm, not really hot but warm uh, we've set ourselves up and it's just a waiting game now. Mahmoud's the cameraman today, so we'll see how he goes. If anything pops up that I like. But we definitely want some juicy fat venison. At the moment the bucks are looking in mint condition. There's a lot of fat from all the good feed around and just an ideal time to take a buck and it would probably be in the late stages of velvet.
So this is our resident family of swallows. I came here in early spring and they had a nest in my soap holder. And as you can see, they come and roost here every night. They are so cute. They're not afraid of us. They are um, sort of accustomed to us opening the door and closing the door. This is where their nest was. It was in the soap holder here, so I just dismantled it before. But yeah, it's pretty cute. Uh, it's midsummer and everything is snap, crackle, pop. Um, everything's dry, everything's gone yellow. So the, the actual floor is multicolored. Now we've we've located some blood and it's so 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 hard to find blood in this type of terrain at this type of heat. Now that was an eventful morning, um, getting the chance to see those beautiful bucks in velvet in person. You know, even if you're rifle hunting, the word patience is an understatement. Yeah, it's disappointing. <laughs> I really wanted that, that buck. He's taken off and it's a lesson learnt for myself. Even though the ducks flew off and usually it is a warning sign, I should have just let it be. I could have had a chance the next morning or the morning after, but yeah, just a bit shattered to be honest. <laughs> it was a beautiful buck. Like we got him so close on the on the trail cams and you know not to to land him and I honestly wanted to taste that fat fallow meat at the moment and they got that much fat on their bodies because the feed is so good and they're just a prime time to get them when they're in velvet. All they do is eat, eat, eat. 
and they're on the last stages they're in hard antler but they got velvet all over the antlers so disappointing mate nando shot something huh yeah yeah hello yeah have a look shut the fuck up man <laughs> Shut your mouth, bro. <laughs> Wallah, you're the biggest legend. Oh, Wallah, you found uh, him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I had to bullshit it, and he's gonna have to hang himself, but <laughs> I just took a selfie with uh, something that he just shot. <laughs> oh my god, man. <laughs> we, um. <laughs> uh, so honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying, he's about to hang himself. <laughs> um. He's not lying as well, he's the biggest buck I've ever seen. I'm talking, I'm talking this guy's like, we're gonna get a lot of quality meat out of this guy. Um, he's huge. Wow. He didn't think that I'd, I'd, I'd find him, but he knows I'm a bulldog, so. No, I've never met anybody as persistent as this bloke here, man. Can't believe oh, it. I just can't believe it, honestly. I, I've, I've been here for like half an hour, I've sent Sam a message saying, look, come back. I'm, I can't find him, so I need him in a haystack. And I got to sit here and lie to this guy and say to him, oh, I got reception. Yeah. Um, this isn't far from the fence. You can see in the background there, there's, there's the grass. Uh, 40 meters, 50 meters, 50 meters. Anyways, so we anticipated he came here. My brother went this way, I went that way. I'm going to turn the camera around and zoom into something which is pretty much on this rock formation that he walked past. This is how hard it is to see these creatures, okay? Now he's in velvet which is, is stunning but it makes it even harder because his antlers now look the colour of the actual wood so on the trees. So I'm going to zoom into him and he's going to walk to him. I'm going to let him find him himself while I'm filming. So I'm going to show you the antler zooming in and he's going to walk in that direction. Good luck, buddy. I still haven't seen it, by the way. I want to kill him. Watch this. <laughs> Just hurry up. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, get this, guys. Go on, you can walk straight. Stay to your left a touch. Left. Now, he'd be walking to this thing and supposedly you still can't see, you still can't see, you still can't see. But this is what I saw. Now this is by far the largest fallow deer I have ever seen. Look at the size of the body on this buck, it's amazing. Well, this has to be one of my most prized possessions here. <laughs> I've always wished for a good fallow velvet buck. And, you know, today it all came through. <laughs> you know, it was looking pretty grim when it happened, but, you know, we've got this buck and several other bucks on our trail cams. And we've got real good footage of all these bucks, really, to be honest. And he's got probably one of the biggest bodies I have ever seen on a deer. Honestly, oh, he's full of water as well. But anyway, so I sort of gave up hope after searching. We found a bit of blood and that disappeared. And then I jumped over the fence again, just sat down on a rock and the word miserable was an understatement. Anyway, so Sam stayed in there. I sent him a message saying, Sam, I'm, I'm over the fence. Look, I've given up. There's no way we're gonna find him in there. Sam, Sam being Sam, <laughs> You know, disappeared for about half an hour, came back, jumped over the fence, looked normal. He goes, man, don't worry about it. You know, look, we'll, get, we'll see something else. You know, we'll get the chance to get something else. I was just like, look, uh, this is what I wanted and I don't think we'll ever see this bloke again, you know, like. And then, <laughs> probably the biggest surprise of my life, to be honest, and that was genuine. When he showed me that photo on his phone, he found the buck not even 30 meters away from the fence line and man probably one of my best hunting moments because fallow deer to me are my favorite like i love red deer but fallow i'm, I'm my number one and to land a monster buck like this absolutely stoked you know like 
But yeah, man, I just want to stare at him all day. But it is summer and it's going to heat up eventually. You know, the velvet will get wrecked, so we have to cut the meat up now, cape him out and head straight to the taxidermist and get the job done there. But I'll have to really thank Sam once again, man, because if it wasn't for Sam's persistence, there's no way I would have found this buck, honestly. Yeah, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's one of the young five fledglings that left the bathroom. He's the youngest of them and he's having problems flying in this heavy wind. But they're such a cute little bird. So light and they float in the air. So he hasn't got the strength to sort of push himself. Mum and dad aren't far away, so which is pretty good. for my first hunt for rabbits and see if I can kill some rabbits. Sorry, There's been a bit of an interruption. Sam's going from the top of the hill, run. There must be some big boys out there. Shot it freestanding. You missed the easy one. So what you shooting with? Shooting with the 22, straight for the throat. Young, nice young bunny. Taking it back to camp. One of the easiest animals to gut and clean and skin. All right, so because I don't have an axe, lucky I had my nail bag, I've got a chisel and a hammer. <laughs> Just on the joints like that, crack. One, two, that's the legs off quickly. Now this is the most fun part. You think, how am I gonna skin this? All right, in the center of his backbone here, it's usually good to do a little slit. There, now called tug of war. Grab your end. Now this way so the camera can see. Stay here. Push. Push, 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 push. Keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, peel it off, peel it off, peel it off. That's it. See how easy that was? Look at that. Now the skin. A naked bunny. <laughs> Same thing. Push it off. Yeah, push, push all the way. Look at that. We've skinned this thing. How easy was that? Now you've got the gutting process. Got ourselves two back straps and two legs. Oh, yum. Alan's lollies. If I wasn't for these babies, I wouldn't have seen them. <laughs> 